We met each other in Los Angeles four years ago? Three? More? Was it six years ago, actually? Was it? Yeah, yeah. And then we just became really good friends. And then just, you know, do you want to work together? We should do something. And then I was living in L.A. for a while. And, you know, actually living in the same street. And uh, we, we were kind of like pretty much... We made a record together with Kifis's partner. Um, Jade called Unloved and then we just you know we just have a really good time together and we both still have our separate you know lives doing our own individual things but when we come together it's it's, it's kind of magical because you know it's it's just fun you know and we just laugh for you know the duration of the the process so that yeah, <laughs> what he said. <laughs> I think we're still figuring it out, but it, it connected early, and then it's like with anything, right? You, you keep working, and you don't want to do the same thing you did the last time. And so, I mean, David's always good at sort of like we have to push, or we're not going to use anything, not one sound from the last thing or this. And, of course, the subject matter makes it a whole new sort of playground for us to do it. So... It's. I, I think the connection just keeps on developing, but of course it gets it gets a bit easier. That didn't come across as a joke. <laughs> Say nothing to our wives, okay? But we are in a relationship, and um, no, you know what? It's kind of like I think we have. Uh, we come from very different places musically, and meet somewhere in the middle. That's really exciting. So we both can like offer so much that we both like you know it's a taste thing but I think most first and foremost I mean obviously you you know you know I'd be lying here if we're both I think very experienced now and we're, we both you know we're pretty good at what we do and we both offer different things but we also we get on so well and we have um, a, a, a kind of certain kind of like a, what's the word kind of threshold of taste, you know, like if we're doing something and it's not good, we'll generally both agree that it's not good and vice versa. So it's, yeah, but mostly we just laugh and it's just the two of us in the studio and we just, you know, smoke exotic tobacco, drink fine red wine and make <laughs> interesting sounds and, you know, try to just mold something into being something good that we both like. It's weird, I did this thing recently for Mojo Magazine and they asked me what my favorite album was of all time and I kind of answered it impulsively and then I sent it off to my uh, publicist who was looking after it and within an hour I was like writing back on no no put this in put this in so that changes like all the time but I think we're both into kind of quite experimental music but we both love pop like good pop music and we into you know all my favorite composers in film and I'm sure you know you, for the most part, I think <coughs> it's like they're not really composers in the film sense. It's like people like Johnny Greenwood and Broadcast and Cat's Eyes and uh, Jeff Barrow. They're all like artists operating in the world of film. Mm -hmm. And those, all those scores are super inspiring. In fact, I was here last year for 71 and I'm looking at the category this year and I'm going, I'm so glad I wasn't in this category because Cat's Eyes and Jeff and they're amazing scores. So it's kind of like anyone, I suppose, who's just pushing the boat out and doing something different and interesting and original and, you know, they're not just kind of like milking the same formula so any and, and Mika Levi you know she is fucking amazing you know it's like two female artists Rachel from Cat's Eyes and Mika to me they're the hottest composers in the world right now um, and it's amazing you know and nobody's picked up on the fact that actually they're women you know and they're just like they're, they're I'm in awe of those two I think they're just incredible right they're just mm -hmm. so you just be inspired and you know we're always taking in new things, listening to new things, looking for old things, obscure things, things that are just challenging or someone's doing something that you just feel, you know what I mean? It's just, it's all, it just all boils down to being a fan of music. So, and then that hopefully comes out in what you're trying to kind of do. I don't know, Kephas is about, you're just starting a new TV show. Yeah, like starting something and then, uh, but yeah, we just keep circling around. I mean, we just finished another fun one, uh, can I say? No. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we've, we've been having some some other things. That'll yeah, be we, we just did the fall, right? The fall, the third series of the fall. So that was fun. I mean, again, it's like London Spy, right? We we're just basically going go and do your thing, and then we just deliver loads of music, and then the director's like, "This is great," and you're like, "Cool," <laughs> which is like the way you hope every job is, because you just want people to trust you and uh, have got an open mind rather than controlling. I think we're all of it because it keeps you rounded it, it, and it's nice to bounce back and forth between it all because yeah. it is each, each one sort of, it, it's lucky to be able to have that and do it. Yeah. It's, it's also kind of like, it keeps you kind of like fresh for like if, if you're working on a film or working, you know, like it's, it, kind of, it can be so exhausting, right? So you get to the end of the film and you're like, the last thing I'm going to do now is work on a film. And then you jump into production, and it's like it's really fresh because you've had time away for it, so you can be really objective. And then you've done that, and you go, all oh, right, we're in the mood for another film now. So it kind of keeps all the different genres kind of fresh, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know.